Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the show where we are always striving to find the most obscure answers. Let's meet today's players. And couple number one. Hi, I'm Michelle and this is my best mate, Ellie, and we're from Birmingham. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Claire and this is my boyfriend, Ricky. We're from Cork and live in London. Couple number three. Hi, my name's Sue. This is my daughter, Holly, and we live in Barnsley. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Mike B, and this is Mike Hell, and we're from Torbay in Devon. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. Very warm welcome to Pointless. Lovely to have you with us. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. Does he get hotter every day, or is it just climate change? It's my Pointless <laughs> friend, it's Richard. <laughs> Hiya. Hey, everybody. Um, it's climate change. Yeah. Now, hello, everyone. Welcome back to uh, the people who are coming back. Welcome back to Sue and Holly, through to the head-to-head -head last time. Uh, Michelle and Ellie have had a very unusual time on Pointless. They've got through yeah. to the second round both times they've been on, but then joined the 200 Club both times. So that's sending out mixed signals, isn't it? <laughs> but fingers crossed we'll see uh, a lot more of them uh, today. Uh, welcome to Ricky and Claire. Lovely to have you here. And we've got Multi-Mic on, uh, on Podium know. 4. Yeah. It's been a long time since we've had, uh, since we've had a double Dave or a Multi-Mic or, a, yeah. you know... Extraordinary. It's, uh, it's a while, right? It's nice, I like it. Time. Nice, yeah, b and like on it. the same podium. Uh, I've given away the jackpot two shows in a row. So what we have to do this show, therefore, is fill that jackpot up with pointless answers. It's the only thing for it. It's the only way to, yeah. it's the only way to do it. Someone's going to be taking it. The only way to go. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Rob and Lisa won the jackpot last time, is what we're saying. Uh, so we're starting off with a jackpot of £1,000. Uh, right, if everyone's ready, let's play pointless. All you have to remember is this. At the end of each round, we will eliminate the pair with the highest score. So for as long as your scores are nice and low, everything will be lovely. Very, very best of luck to one and all. Our first category this afternoon is... Word endings. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Things that end... E T T E, Richard. Uh, yeah, I like the way you said that. Yeah. Um, yeah, on each board, we're going to show you seven clues. The answers to all of these clues end E T T E. It'll be seven on the first board, seven on the second, so 14 in all to have a go at home. Good luck. Thank you very much indeed. OK, let's reveal our first board of clues to et things. We've got a puppet with jointed limbs moved by strings. M. Name originally given to the sport of volleyball by its inventor. M, a thin board with a thumb hole on which an artist mixes colours. P, the name of the three-kilometre seafront promenade in the city of Cannes. L, C, a decoration typically made of ribbon worn by supporters of a sports team or political party. R, surname of Elanis, Canadian singer of the 1990s hits Ironic and Thank You. M, and Austrian-born queen consort of King Louis XVI of France. M. A. Now then, Ellie, welcome back. Tell us more about yourself, Ellie. I'm social secretary of the medics rugby team. The medics rugby team? Yes. Do you play at all? I do. You do. And yeah. uh, being social secretary, is this an onerous business? Yeah, it's a big responsibility, organising the socials. Um... I mean, social is very important for a rugby club. Some might argue the key parts, the glue <laughs> that holds the thing together. It is the, the main attraction, yes. Yeah, there we are. Anyway, it sounds fun. Ellie, what are you going to go for on our board? Um, I think I'm going to go for uh, the third one as pallet. Pallet. The thin board with a thumb hole. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for pallet. Pallet is right. Goes down to 73. Not bad. Yeah, and as is the way with language, it's also come to mean the range of colours that a particular artist uses, you know, what's, uh, what their palette is, essentially. Mm. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. And now then, Ricky, welcome. Thank Lovely you. to have you here, Ricky. Tell us all about yourself. Um, like Claire said, we're from Cork originally. We're living in London now, um, and I'm working in North London in a storage facility. So what's stored in the facility? If you're moving house and there's a gap and uh, you stick your furniture in there for a, a few months. It would be fascinating to just open all of them, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, What are people imagine, keeping in there? It'd be the odd one or two, wouldn't there? But it costs a lot of money. Sometimes storage is like gym membership. 
Yeah. In that you start forgetting that that money is going out of your account. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you just leave stuff there. Or it's a bit like that thing where you've got a shirt that's a little bit tight. You think, well, no, I'll keep it because one day I'll fit into it. I'll fit back into <laughs> yeah. that, yeah. It's a bit like that. <laughs> I'll, I'll fit back into that I'll sofa. I'll fit back into that. No, because I'm <laughs> most definitely going to be thinner in yeah. a couple of months' time. Um, right, Ricky, what are you going to go for? Um, I know a few of them, but I'll go for the one second last, which I think is Alanis Morissette. Morissette says, Ricky, let's see how many of our 100 people said Morissette for Alanis. It is right. It is Morissette. Well, 73 is the only score we have at the moment. You're on 69. Yeah, well played. Uh, interestingly, uh, ironic, although it's a very, very famous song, never made the top 10 in the UK. <laughs> well, now that's ironic. The, I mean, isn't it? Yeah, isn't uh, it? Got to number 11, although the album Jagged Little Pill was in the top 10 for 41 weeks, so yeah. uh, she was doing OK. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Now, Sue, welcome back. Um, tell us more about yourself, Sue. I was going to tell you all about when I taught myself how to play the saxophone when I turned 40. How did that go? I joined our local concert band um, and played the saxophone, probably the third position down. Alto or tenor? Alto. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I Have loved it. Have you kept it. up with it? Um, I just play at home now because... Um, did the they get rid of you? Did they sack conductor you? and oh, it was a bit like a sergeant major. Oh, that's no So fun. I ended up miming quite a lot <laughs> so that I didn't get a wrong note. I mean, if you do that, you can get into any band, presumably. <laughs> Thinking about it. Anyway, Sue, what are you going to go for? Um, I think I'm going to pick the top one, the puppet, uh, and say marionette. Marionette, says Sue. Let's see how many of our 100 people agree with that. Marionette. Marionette is exactly right. 73 is our high score. 69 was our low score. Till now, 44. <laughs> yeah, it's also what you do just after you get engaged to Annette. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. And now then, Mike L, welcome to Point. Just tell us all about yourself. Um, my name's Mike. I come from uh, Paynton down in Devon, uh, work in Exeter, and a uh, big fan of rugby, and that's how Mike and I have been friends since we played under-14s together. Uh, right. Nowadays, we haven't played for a long time. We are social members these days. Social but You should hang out with Ellie. She can tell you, <laughs> she can tell you a thing or two about that. Um, what, what do you do for work, Mike? Um, I'm in health and safety, the rock and roll world of health and safety. Yeah. So, yeah, it keeps me busy and entertained. OK. Mike, this board's all yours. Will you fill in all our blanks for us? Um, yep. The bottom one, Marie Antoinette. Um, decoration, uh, I think, is a rosette. And I'm not sure on the other two. I didn't know volleyball had another name previously. Um, I think I'm going to go for Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette says, Mike L, let's see how many of our 100 people went for Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette, absolutely right. 73 the high score, 44 the low. There you are on 53. Not bad at all. Okay. Uh, well played, Mike. Yeah, one of her pearl and diamond pendants sold in 2018 for $36 million at auction in 2018. You're right to go for Marie Antoinette, only just. Rosette, the other one you knew would have scored just more, would have scored you 56. Uh, do you know the can one? La Croisette. La Croisette. Absolutely, that would have scored you four points. Now, I'm with you, Mike. I did not know that volleyball uh, had another name. I've got it written down in front of me. I've never heard of it before. Very well done if you did. Uh, I'll tell you what it is. It's Mintonet is the answer. Would have scored you two points. And it comes from the fact that the... Uh, I mean, firstly, volleyball was supposed to be a slightly less uh, physical version of basketball, so that was the kind of thinking. But the rules they took from badminton. So oh. they took... They called it Mintonet. Thank you, Richard. We are halfway through the round. Let's have a quick look at those scores. I can tell you, 44 is the best score of the pass. Sue, Holly, it's all looking great. <laughs> 53 is where we find the mics. There we are, looking good. 69, Ricky and Claire. Then 73, really not that too far ahead. Ellie and Michelle. So, yes, it's all salvageable, Michelle. We just need an ace answer from you in the next pass, so good luck with that. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put seven more clues up on the board to things that end E-T-T-E, -T -T -E, and here they are. We've got Swedish pop duo who had UK hits with It Must Have Been Love and Joyride in the 1990s are a long, narrow French loaf or a gemstone cut in a long, rectangular shape. B, Geneva-based football club, 17 times Swiss national champions in the 20th century. S, an outline drawing of an object or a person in profile, usually filled in with black. S. French author, played by Kira Knightley in a 2018 biopic, who wrote the 1944 novella Gigi, 
C. Surname of the American actor siblings Rosanna, Patricia, Alexis, David and Richmond. A. And a dungeon accessed only through a trapdoor in its ceiling from the French for to forget. O. Now then, Mike B. Welcome to Point. It's great to have you here. Tell Thank us you. all about yourself, Mike. So I'm Mike. Uh, I'm a director. I work in education for College in Exeter. Uh, overall responsibility for apprenticeships down at the college. What else do you do for fun, aside from rugby? I'm the father of triplets, so that takes up quite a lot of my time. <sighs> oh, that's Whoa. good going. What, what are they called? Uh, Harry, Oliver and Sophia. Harry, Oliver, Sophia, hello. Um, how old are they? Uh, they're 12 now. Excellent. Um, OK, now, Mike, you are on 53. If you can score 19 or less at this early stage, you will be straight through to round two. OK, uh, I'm going to go for the top ants there, the Swedish pop duo, and I'm going to say rock set. Rock set says Mike B. Here is your red line. Let's see what happens when we say rock set. Look at that, not bad at all. 31 takes your total up to 84. Yeah, very well played. Don't bore us, get to the chorus. That was their, uh, that was their motto. Very good. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, now, Holly, welcome back. Uh, remind us all about yourself, Holly. Tell us more. Uh, hi, I'm Holly. Um, and since I was eight, I have been a competitive swimmer. Have you now? Yeah, I took it up when I was out of like normal swimming lessons and yeah. then continued it through uni. What, what sort of level are you at? You, you county level? Are you... Um, I was county and regional when I was sort of swimming for home. And then at uni, there's like national competitions that we right. go to. Good luck with that. That's very exciting. Um, now, Holly, there you are, 44, 39 or less, gets you into the next round. Yeah, rock set was my risky one. Um, I only know, no, no, one other, but I think I'm going to take a stab at the Kira Knightley biopic. Colette? Colette, says Holly. Here is your red line. Let's see where we end up with Colette. Okay. Colette is right. <laughs> that was in there somewhere. Very well done indeed. That goes down to 11. That's our best score so far. <laughs> Takes your total up to 55. Very strong. Well done, Holly. Terrific work. Yeah, they'll, uh, they'll allow you to stay in publishing as well, having, <laughs> uh, having got that one right. Thank you very much indeed. Richard, now then, Claire. Welcome to Point. It's lovely to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Hi. I'm a dancer and I work part-time in retail. So what sort of dancing do you do? Uh, well, I got my degree in jazz dance, but yeah. in college we did everything. Ballet, tap, contemporary, commercial, jazz. So you've got it all. Do you, do yeah. you dance professionally now? Then, um, yes. I'm still kind of training. Right. And um, when I'm not training, so I'm, I want to do more backing dancer thing. Do you know what I love about backing dancers is how quickly they just get it. They, you know, you, it, yeah. you basically go through something once. So you have to have an amazing memory, presumably, yeah. for it mm -hmm. as well. But it's absolutely staggering how quickly yeah. people pick up those routines. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Claire, you're on 69. 14 or less is what we require from you at this okay. stage. Okay. Um, I know a few, and I'm going to go for the second last one. I hope I'm pronouncing this right and say Arquette. Arquette, says yes. Claire. Here's your red line. Can we get close to that with Arquette? Arquette is right. 48 for Arquette. Takes your total up to 117. Very well played. Yeah, I, I've heard of all of those apart from Richmond. That's a new name to yeah. me, Richmond Arquette. Richmond Arquette. Thank you very much indeed. Now, uh, Michelle. Mm. Michelle, welcome back to Pointless. Thank this you. is your third and final attempt at the Pointless final. Remind us all about yourself. So my name's Michelle and I'm a law student at the University of Birmingham. And uh, in my free time, I run a food blog. Based on things you've eaten out, is that? Yeah, so I take pictures and I uh, write reviews on Instagram. And it got like quite a big interest, they started growing, and then I started getting invited to restaurants to try different food and, like, for free. We get to try a bunch of the food, take pictures, and like that. Wow. There is such a thing as a free lunch. That's amazing. Um, now, there you are. You're on 73. 43 mm. or less gets you into round two. Do you want to talk us through the board? So, another second one is probably baguette, and then the fourth is probably silhouette, and the last one, I know a bit of French, and I think it, the French word to forget is oublié, but I'm not too sure, so I'm probably just going to say baguette. OK, you're going to go for Baguette. OK, here is your red line. Let's see if we can get below that red line with Baguette. Mm. 
Bad luck. I'm afraid 66 for baguettes takes your total up to 139. Yeah, I think I might have gone for the risk there. Do you know the, uh, the last it's one? It's an oubliette. Oubliette. Absolutely right. So you were absolutely on it. Exactly, uh, exactly right. It would have scored 20 points, so it would have seen you safely through. Um, the outline of the drawing, you're quite right, was silhouette. That would have knocked you out as well. 56 for that. And the best answer on the board, uh, the Swiss football team, is Servette. Servette, well done if you said that. Three points. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So that brings us to the end of our first round. It means we have to say goodbye to one of our pairs. And I'm sorry to say, oh, Michelle and Eddie, this is where we say goodbye to you. Thank you so much for coming to me. It's been lovely having you on. I'm sorry you haven't been far enough to take home uh, a, a trophy. Uh, but anyway, it's been lovely having you on. Thank you very much indeed, Michelle and Ellie. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Well done, everybody. We made it to our et round. Our category for round two this afternoon is... Famous people. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? Go first, and whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> OK, and the question concerns... People born in 1980. Richard. You're going to show your board now of uh, 16 faces. They were all born in 1980, but who are they, please? Thank you very much indeed. OK, let's reveal our board. Here they are. All of these people were born in 1980, but who are they? So, Ricky, we come to you first. OK, I know a few of them, but my dad is a big golf fan, so I will go for Justin Rose. Justin Rose says Ricky. Let's see how many of our 100 people spotted Justin Rose up there. Is right. It's a great answer. Look at that. What a way to start the round. Three for Justin Rose. Fantastic. Yeah, very nicely done. Um, of course, uh, Olympic champion, major champion, all sorts of things. The, uh, the brilliant Justin Rose. Thank you very much indeed. Richard, now then, Holly. I have to go for him just because he's on the board. Um, I will be going for Lin-Manuel Miranda. Lin-Manuel Miranda, says Holly. Let's see how many of our 100 people spotted him there. Lin-Manuel Miranda, absolutely there. Hamilton. It's another great answer. That goes down <laughs> to three as well. Very well done indeed. It's going well so far this round, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and he, of course, is the, uh, the composer, lyricist, all sorts of stuff of Hamilton and, uh, and In the Heights as well. Now, Mike B. Mm, some uh, low scores to follow there, so um, let's go for uh, Jensen Button. Jensen Button. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Jensen Button. It's another good answer. 12 for Jensen Button. Uh, yeah, great answer so far. Well, it's very rare that 12 would be the highest score uh, on a pass. I have to say, yeah, the world um, Formula 1 racing uh, champion from uh, 2009. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we're halfway through our round. Let's have a great look at those scores. Three, the best score of the pass. And Holly and Sue and Ricky and Claire are all like as they lie on three. Then we travel up to 12, which is where we find the mics. So, Mike L, let's have a nice low score from you just to even things up, if that's all right. Good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, Mike, all these people born in 1980. Who on earth are they all? I'm... Slight risk I'm going to take with this one, I think. Um, on the bottom row there, I think, second in from the right is Christina Ricci. Christina Ricci. Let's see if that is right. Christina Ricci, no red line for you as you're currently the high scorers. Christina Ricci is absolutely right. Another lovely low score. Look at it. Goes down to two. Best score so far, <laughs> my girl. Taking your total up to 14. That's a great answer. What a round we're having. Very well played by Wednesday Adams, amongst uh, many, many other things, Christina Ritchie. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Sue, you are on three. If you can score ten or less, <laughs> you're into the head-to-head -head for the second time round. I don't round. think that's going to be possible. Uh, I'm just going to play safe and say Russell Howard. Russell Howard says, Sue, let's see how many of our 100 people said. Russell Howard, here is your red line. Yeah. 28. Yeah. Russell Howard takes your total up to 31. <laughs> yeah, very well done. I never mind too much about 40-year-olds being successful. I think I think 40-year-olds yeah. and, and us are sort of the same generation. I think it's, I I, think so. I think it's yeah. kind of OK. 
Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Claire, you are on three. You have to score 27 or less. OK. Talk us through the board. On the top, we have Kim Kardashian. I don't know who that is on the left in the second row, but there's Macaulay Conkin, uh, Ryan Gosling. I think I know her first name, but I'm not sure of her second. I think she could be a Victoria's Secret angel. Um, Stephen Gerrard, Christina Aguilera. I don't know who that is. And Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, I'm going to go for Christina Aguilera. Christina Aguilera says, Claire, OK, here is your red line. Can you get below that with Christina Aguilera? Let's find out. It's right. Oh, look at that, down to 31. <laughs> takes your total up to 34. Yeah, it's unlucky, cos the other answers on the bottom row that you knew would have seen you through Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, it would have scored you... 19 points. Let's look at the top. Kim Kardashian West, you're quite right. She would have scored you 54. The gentleman on the next row... Ben Whishaw. Ben Whishaw. He would have scored three points. Now, we've had the absolute best answers on the board, but Ben Whishaw, Linwell Miranda, Justin Rose and Christina Ritchie. So we had the three of the best possible answers we could possibly have had in that round. So very well played, everybody. Um, you're quite right. Macaulay Culkin, he would have scored you too many points. He would have scored you 44. Do you know the next the one? The leader of the Lib Dems, whose yes. name already is... Uh... Joe Swinson. Joe Swinson. Joe Swinson Thank you would have scored you seven points. Oh. Um, Ryan Gosling would have seen you through. 15 points for Ryan Gosling. Next row down is Giselle Bündchen. She would have scored five. Uh, then it is Venus Williams. She would have scored 14. Stephen Gerrard, 37. And the final one? Catherine Jenkins. Catherine Jenkins, yeah. And Catherine Jenkins would have scored 13 points. So, Christina Ritchie, Mike, is the best answer on the board. Very well played. Thank you very much indeed. Well, that brings us to the end of our second round, which means we have to say goodbye to another pair. And I'm afraid that pair, Claire and Ricky, is you. That's just the rules. We have to say goodbye to someone and it's you. We'll see you again next time. Look forward yeah. to it very much. Meantime, thank you very much, Claire thank and you. Ricky. But yeah. for the remaining two pairs, it is now time for the head-to-head. Congratulations, Sue and Holly, Mike and Mike. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £1,000. But before we play the head-to-head, -head, we have a chance here to fill that jackpot up a little bit. Maybe we could put 500 extra quid in it if we can find <laughs> two more pointless answers. Here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many NASA missions. <laughs> as they could. Richard? Yeah, we had a double point this for the first time in 19 shows last time. It'd be lovely to do it again, wouldn't it? Um, let's take a look. We're going to put six names on the board. Four of them are real NASA missions, two of which uh, no one mentioned at all, and two of them are ones that we've made up. So can you work out the pointless answers here? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our six potential pointless NASA missions, and here they are. We've got... Curiosity, Protector, Mariner, Taurus, Juno, Phoenix. Phoenix. I've heard of Mariner. I, I feel like they're Juno as well. Yeah, yeah, I feel like Juno is maybe in there as a red herring. I like the top one. Curiosity. Why not? We don't really know, so we'll take a stab at Curiosity. Curiosity, say Sue and Holly. Is Curiosity a pointless NASA mission? Let's find out. Oh. It is a NASA mission. Just put it guessing. <laughs> Oh, it's a pointless Very well done, indeed. There goes Curiosity. Fantastic. Right, Mike and Mike, come on, let's see if we can make this a double pointless. What do you think, Mike? What are you thinking? Do your thinking out loud. We, we, we... I think we excluded Taurus on the basis of it was a bit star-linked anyway in terms of star sign. a bit starry. Yeah, yeah so yeah. Uh, I think we're, we're going to go for uh, Juno. Juno. OK, let's find out. Is Juno a pointless NASA mission? Well, again, it's a NASA mission. Please be pointless. Please be pointless. Oh, no! Oh, one! One! <laughs> one! <laughs> a solitary person out of our hundred. Don't say Mariners. New pointless. Juno. Uh, that was really unlucky, yeah. It, it arrived in Jupiter in 2016, Juno. It's, uh, it's, it's checking out Jupiter for whatever reason. It's up to something. I don't know what. You know what NASA are like. Um, now, I will tell you that uh, Protector is an incorrect answer. That's uh, the name of the spacecraft from Galaxy Quest. 
Mariner scored a point. So of those other two, Taurus and Phoenix, one of those is a pointless answer, one of those is incorrect. Well, let's continue with the, the logic of Taurus being a, a red herring. Let's go with Phoenix. I like the idea of Phoenix. OK. Rising from the ashes. What do you think at home? Have you said curiosity at home and is Phoenix your second one? If it is, let's see if you've gone two from two. Phoenix, is that a pointless answer? Absolutely. Yay! Very well Good. done. Uh, although everyone's thinking about they wouldn't name something after a star sign. Uh, they, Gemini and Aquarius are both NASA missions, so Taurus is a <laughs> red herring in that way. But, you know, that's right. Added some money, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We can add £250 now to the jackpot, taking it up to £1,250. But who will be playing for it? Let's find out in the head-to-head. -head. Now, the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. You are now allowed to confer before you give your answers, which is nice. Um, best of luck to both pairs. Here is our first question, and it is all about traditional desserts. Richard. Yeah, five pictures now of traditional desserts uh, with alternate letters of their name as well, but what are these desserts? Oh, five puddings. And here they come. What are they? We've got A, M, N, H, S, E, T, R. B, K, I, K, R, O, K, R, L, R. C, D, V, N, H, R, J, N, E. D, P, N, A, P, E, P, I, E, O, N, A, E. And E, L, R, Y, A, E. Oh, that's a bit easier for you to finish isn't with, it? isn't it? Oh, yeah. thank you, thank you. There we go. So, Sue and Holly, you're a golden couple. I think that means you go that first. Well, you've got Manchester Park, Devonshire something. Yeah. Pineapple upside down. I think Lardy Cake. You ever try it? Yeah, yeah. So we're going to try E, Lardy Cake. Lardy Cake for E, says Sue and Holly. Now, the mics. Do you want to talk us through that board of puddings? Um, uh, a, we think, is Manchester Tart. Uh, don't need to say anything more than that. Knickerbocker Glory, the second one. Uh, we think that's Devonshire something, beginning with J, and then pineapple, yeah, not sure. Um, I'm filling in the blanks in that one, so I think, do you go for A? A, I think, yeah. A, Manchester tart. A, Manchester tart. So we have lardy cake and we have Manchester tart. Sue and Holly went for lardy cake for E. Let's see how many of our 100 said lardy cake. Oh. A. <laughs> It is a lardy cake. That sounds like a normal. Sounds special. delicious. <laughs> uh, Daphne goes to 17. <laughs> Meanwhile, the mics have gone for Manchester Tart for A. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Manchester Tart. Manchester Tart is right. And that stops at 30. Well done, Sue and Holly. Up to one question, you're up 1-0. Very well played, yeah. There is an answer up there that would have uh, that would have beaten Lardy Cake, which we will get to. B would not have beaten it. That, of course, is a Knickerbocker glory. Uh, would have scored you 51 points. I would leave C for a minute. Um, D, pineapple. pineapple. I got confused because I kept thinking this was spice, the second word, and, of course, oh, it's not. There's upside one, there's... down cake. Yeah, pineapple yeah. upside down cake, absolutely. Would have scored 37. Uh, and the best answer is Devonshire something, for sure. I know, see, my grandmother's mate is Junket. Yeah, Devonshire Junket. Yeah. Ten points for Devonshire Junket. That was the best answer on the board, so well done if you said that. OK, now, here comes your second question. The mics, you have to... You get to answer it first, but you have to win it to stay in the game, so good luck. Our second question is all about... fictional members of the clergy. Richard? Uh, yeah, we're going to show you now five fictional members of the clergy, and we need you to tell us the books that they appeared in, please. We're going to show you the initials of those books. Thank you very much indeed. OK, let's reveal our five fictional members of the clergy, and here they come. Bishop Manuel Arangarosa, Dan Brown, TDVC. Edward Cajabon, George Eliot, M. Robert Lee, Roald Dahl, TVON. Mr. William Collins, Jane Austen, PAP. And Father Mapple, Herman Melville, MD. There we are. The mics go first. Roald Dahl was TVON. Well done, doing that. 
Yeah, and that'll be rolled down once TV on. OK, um, we're going to go down to the bottom there. We're going to say uh, Father Maple from Moby Dick. Moby Dick for Father Maple. Moby Dick. OK, now, Sue and Holly, do you want to talk us through that board? Um, the top one, Da Vinci Code, and then you've got Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice. The Roald Dahl one is... We think it's the vicar of somewhere, and then they probably won't let me back into publishing, even after Colette, because uh, I don't know, the George Eliot one. Um, what do you reckon? Go for that one. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think any of the ones we know are going to beat uh, Moby Dick, so we'll go for The Da Vinci Code. OK, The Da Vinci Code. Uh, so we have Moby Dick and The Da Vinci Code. Uh, the mics have gone for Moby Dick. Let's see if that is right for Father Mapple. That goes down to 12. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sue and Holly have gone for the Da Vinci Code. Let's see if that is right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. That's dirty. Uh, it goes down to 26. <laughs> and it means very well done indeed. The mics have done exactly what they needed. And after two questions, <laughs> they're back in the game. Yeah, well done. Yeah, a Ringo Rossa is actually a, a pun on red herring. A Ringo is a uh, uh, herring in, uh, in Italian. Um, yeah, the George Eliot novel is... Middlemarch. Middlemarch would have seen you through to the final. That would have scored you five points. Um, do you know the role Darwin? It's the Vicar of I somewhere. Vicar of Nantwich, I don't know. The Vicar of Nibbleswick. Of course. Vicar of Nibbleswick. Nibbleswick. Well done if you said that at home. Would have scored four points. Best answer up there. And Pride and Prejudice, of course. Uh, but that would have scored you too many. Would have scored you 34. There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, it all comes down to a third question. Whoever wins this goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot. Best of luck to both pairs. Our third question is all about French films in French. <laughs> Richard. Yep, going to show you the titles now of five films that were set uh, uh, mainly or partly in France, but we're going to show you their French titles. We'll show you uh, someone who starred in the film as well. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five French films, and here they come. La Belle et la Bête, Emma Watson, 2017. Cheval de Guerre, Jeremy Irvin, 2011. A nous la victoire, Sylvester Stallone, 1981. Le plus escroque des deux, Steve Martin, 1988. And L'homme au masque de fer, Leonardo DiCaprio, 1998. There we are. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. Did he do a film called that? Uh, sounds like a film. Um... Cheval, how many people? Warhorse. Yeah, it's yeah. Warhorse. I've got a bottom one. Yeah, I didn't know that one. Yeah, we'll go for the bottom one, The Man in the Iron Mask. The Man in the Iron Mask for the Leonardo DiCaprio film, The Man in the Iron Mask. OK, Mike and Mike, talk us through the board. OK, <clears throat> excuse my French. Uh, La Belle <laughs> et la Bête is uh, Beauty and the Beast. Uh, Cheval de Guerre is Warhorse, I believe. A new La Victoire. I think it escaped Victory or Rocky, something like those two. And Le Plus Escroc des Deux with Steve Martin, 1988. I think that's the only one to take a risk on to try and be that. <laughs> Your face says no. No, um, no, no, no. Go risk. Yeah, OK, we'll go for the risk. And I think the Steve Martin film. Is it called um, The Jerk? OK, we're going to go for The Jerk. So we have The Man in the Iron Mask versus The Jerk. Sue and Holly have gone for The Man in the Iron Mask. Let's see if that's right for the Leonardo DiCaprio film. Oh. It is The Man in the Iron Mask. <laughs> that goes down to 30. <laughs> Meanwhile, we've got Mike and Mike going for The Jerk for Le Plus Escroc... Le Plus Escroc... Escroc? Escroc. Did do. Who knows? Uh, let's find out how many of our 100 people said the jerk. But is it right? Oh. Bad <laughs> luck. I'm afraid not the jerk, which means very well done indeed. Sue and Holly, after three questions, you are through to the final 2-1. Very well played. Yeah, normally we applaud a risk. Uh, I have to say, let's clear up Beauty and the Beast first. You're quite right about that. Um, but it need not detain us. It would have scored 58 points. But Warhorse, which you knew, would have scored 22 points, would have seen you into the final. 
And new Le Victoire, my thinking was exactly the same as yours, which is, I know he's in Escape to Victory, it's got victory in it, but it sounds, it sounds more like a Rocky film as well. So I wouldn't have gone for it, but it is Escape to Victory. Um, would have scored 12 points. And this is the best answer on the board. If I tell you what it translates there are two, as... There it, are two options, I reckon. Okay. There's either The Man With Two Brains... Yeah. ..or there's another film here called All Of Me. Oh, uh, OK. Both of which sort of feel like they could... Should I tell you what it translates yeah, as? Yeah, go on. The most crooked of the two. Oh, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Dirty Rotten Scoundrels oh. is the answer, yeah. Uh, and it was a pointless answer, so very well done yeah. if you said that. Uh, thank you very much for the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round. Mike and Mike, we say goodbye to you now. But that's good news, because if you'd gone through to the final, it would only have been one show. We'd all over in one show. <laughs> Where's the fun in that? Uh, but anyway, thank you very much for playing Mike and Mike. But for Sue and Holly, it is now time for the pointless final. Well, congratulations, Sue and Holly. You've fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. That's yours. That is going home with you. You now have a chance to win the pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £1,250. Now then, we've got to hope there's something that's going to come up on this board that you can have a really good crack at <laughs> and uh, ideally win that jackpot and take it back with you to Barnsley. What do you want to see come up? Um, musical theatre would be a really great one for me and sort of pop culture music from the last... Yeah. 70s rock yeah. music will be really good. <laughs> OK, well, let's see. Four things will appear, as ever. Let's hope you like the look of at least one of them. Today, we can give you 2020 Grand Slam Tennis, the titles of spy novels, Emmerdale, Glaswegian Pop. What do we think about that? I want to pick some spy novels. Or do we want to pick Emmerdale? Because we know our old neighbour. Oh, now there's a point. Yeah. Oh, that'd be nice if your old neighbour, who yeah. was presumably in Emmerdale... Yeah. yeah. Oh, well... Shall we? Yeah? Yeah. Emmerdale? I mean, what, I mean who knows? <laughs> may not may come to nothing, but yeah. be a nice connection anyway. I mean, I mean fingers, fingers crossed your neighbour is an answer to one of these three categories. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we are looking for the uh, name of any member of the Dingle family, please. Uh, that's a, a blood relation of the Dingle family, not by marriage. So any member of the Dingle family who has appeared... Uh, in uh, Emmerdale. We are looking for any landlord or landlady of the Woolpack, or we are looking for any owner of Home Farm. So this is all up to September 2020, according to the ITV website. Very best of luck. Thank you very much, Richard. Now, as always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Let's put 60 <laughs> seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Oh, we've stitched ourselves up. Good yeah. and proper here, aren't we? Um, there's Chaz Dingle, oh. there's Kane Dingle, there's... Is Belle a Dingle? Yeah. Um, but these are all people that one are... Landlords. Well, one... Um... Is Charity? I, I don't know surnames. No. Um, Owners of Home Farm, there were one called Frank. Shall, Frank. Do you even know Dean's character name? <laughs> no. <laughs> um... I think we're going to have to stick with Dingle and just pick a first yeah, name. Three. Yeah. Shall we have a Sue Dingle? No, <laughs> well, we've said three. Charles. So we've got a Charles. We've got uh, Bell. Bell. And Kane Dingle. I think he was like a baddie at some is, point. Is he a Dingle? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Oh, yeah. was he King King? I'm not bothered. I've got my trophy. <laughs> Ten seconds left. Um, so there's a landlord. There were one card. Oh, does Marlon? Did he? I don't think he's a oh, landlord. No. Is he a Dingle? <laughs> that is your time up. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's a great question to finish the minute on. Um, what three answers can you give me? Go on, Holly. We'll have Bell Dingle. Bell Dingle. <laughs> that's just fun <laughs> to say. Um, Kane Dingle. Ken Dingle. Kane, sorry. Oh, Kane Dingle. Kane. Sorry. Um, the accent. A Sue Dingle. Why wouldn't it be Sue a Sue Dingle? Dingle? Why not a Sue Dingle? Um, of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Kane. Kane goes last. Right. Least likely to be pointless. Sue. Sue, and then we put Bell in the middle. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. We've got Sue Dingle, Bell Dingle, Kane Dingle. There we are. Three Dingles. Um, if one of these turns out to be pointless and wins you that jackpot of one thousand two hundred and fifty pounds, what would you like to do with it? I had high hopes for a trip to Iceland, but. Um... 
I don't think we'll be getting there with those answers. Well, you never know. You never know. Sue, what about you? Well, I am going to get a tattoo, a pointless, on my index finger. Of the tower? Yes. Very good. Or of, of, the, of the tower? <laughs> <laughs> the pointless tower, they call me. The pointless tower. <laughs> There we go. Um, well, listen, very, very best of luck. Three answers. You never know with these things. You never know. Um, at least I don't know. Um, <laughs> one of these could turn out to be a brilliant answer. Uh, Sue Dingle could be the one. This was the one you thought was probably your least likely <laughs> yeah. shot uh, at a pointless answer. Let's see if it's right, though. Let's see how many people said Sue Dingle for £1,250. Is it pointless? No-one said it because it's wrong. Oh! <laughs> What oh, well, there we are. Never mind. It would have been nice. But Bell Dingle is your next answer. Let's see if that's correct. Um, we're looking for, obviously, any of the, the blood dingles, as it were. That just sounds awful. <laughs> um, anyway, that's what we're looking for. Um, let's find out if a Bell Dingle is right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. And if it right. is right. Now, if Bell takes us all the way down to Pointless, you leave here with that jackpot of £1,250. Down we go. Through the teens. Still go. Oh, oh. 11. 11 for Bell Dingle. <laughs> Let us turn to your third and final answer, though. Kane Dingle. Let's see if Kane Dingle is a pointless answer for £1,250. How many people said it? Kane Dingle is also right. Your first answer, Sue Dingle, was incorrect. But then Bell Dingle was amazing, took us down to 11. Then Kane Dingle is now taking Ooh. us down through. Oh, oh, no! 30 to okay. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> well, never mind. Well, we had a lot of fun. Uh, we learned a lot about the Dingles, but I'm afraid you didn't manage to find the all important pointless answer. So I'm afraid you don't leave with today's jackpot. But who cares about that? You get two pointless trophies. Exactly. So very, very well done on that. And you performed brilliantly right across both shows you've been on, in fact. So uh, you, can, you can leave with your heads held high. Uh, yeah, very well played. Who, who's your neighbour? Uh, Dean Andrews or, or Marshall? Dean Andrews. He plays Will Taylor. Ah, ah. Dean Andrews, who, is, who is not a dingle. No, oh, imagine if he had been a dingle. <sighs> oh, <laughs> that would have been nice. Um, honestly, I think the Sue Dingle route was the way to go because there's so many <laughs> random names here that uh, you would have been much more likely to get a pointless answer. If you got, I'm going to show you a few of the names, but there's loads and loads. So if you said any of the following, you'd have got yourself um, the jackpot. Uh, Delilah. Eli, Noah, Solomon, there's loads of biblical names. You could have had Albert Dingle, Ben Dingle, Daniel Dingle, Elvis Dingle, Eve Dingle, Luke Dingle, Lulu Dingle, Mark Dingle, Matthew Dingle, all of the uh, Gospels are there. Uh, landlords and landladies of the Woolpack, five pointless answers here. Louise, Appleton, Nicola King, Shirley, Turner, Val Pollard, Jimmy King as well, pointless answer there. Jimmy King, also a pointless answer in this next category, which is the uh, owners of Home Farm. Megan Macy, Natasha Wilde, Robert Sugden, Mark Wilde, Matthew King, Nathan Wilde, Scarlett Nichols, Stella Jones. No dingles there, no, not a dingle to be seen. Well, thank you very much indeed, Richard. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Sue and Holly. I'm sorry you didn't win our jackpot today. That'll therefore roll over onto the next show when we will be playing for £2,250. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>